A group of Australians came together from 1975 to 1978 to help set up radio communications with the Fratellin-led Timorese Liberation Movement during the Indonesian occupation. The resistance radio was the only link the Timorese had with the outside world in the early years of the invasion that started at this time 48 years ago. RTTL's Fernanda Maria and Vicky Madeira fill in the gap from this important time in our history. The first radio contact between Australia and Timorese resistant fighters was set up after the Indonesian invasion on 7 December 1975. The main operator of the radio at that time was Alarico Fernandez. He was the first Timorese Minister of Internal Affairs and Security and he now lives in Indonesia. Rob Wesley is an Australian activist who helped to operate the radio receiver in Darwin, telling the world about the tiny country's deadly struggle for independence. Well, um, especially for the first three years of the invasion, that was the only news that came out of Timor. And it was very important, and because the Indonesian military um, was telling a lot of lies, I mean, they, they still do that today. Transmissions from East Timor back then were carried out from various positions in the hills surrounding Dili, and oftentimes sounds of bombardments could be heard. Well, sometimes it was news of um, um, fighting and who controlled what areas of Timor, that sort of thing. And sometimes um, messages were sent to family uh, both ways. Wesley said he and his friend Brian Manning sometimes took broadcasts to the media and brought journalists with them to listen to the radio broadcasts at various locations outside of Darwin. Brian and I did the, uh, the contacts in the, um, you know, like we call it a public radio, because um, we'd sometimes take journalists with us and people like that. I Timor Leste's Resistance Museum in Dili displays confronting and intriguing relics of the time including a photo of the current Prime Minister Sanana Guzmao talking on a radio transmitter. RTTL reporter Vicky Madeira gained an exclusive interview at the museum with the radio transmitter operator Jose Agustino Sequeira, well known as Somocho. Tucked away in a corner of the museum lobby is one of the radio resistance receivers. These are some of the devices of the radio mobere that were used in overseas to receive and transmit the information. Somocho also walked us through the museum and showed us the replica of his underground hiding place that he shared with former Timorese guerrilla commander Nino Coni Santana. In 1989, I felt like there was no need to continue provide security to the radio because we had lost too many people. The last blow was when we needed to move from below and we were attacked and encircled by Indonesian military and my commander behind me was shot on his head. He said the ambush killed five of his group members. According to the Commission for Reception, Truth and Reconciliation, Indonesian police or soldiers were responsible for 70% of the 18,600 unlawful killings or disappearances between 1975 and 1999.